What's up guys? This is the Rifleman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as Louisiana. And in this episode, a Swedish army has wandered dangerously too close to one of our armies and we are in the strategy of if it's enemy, it dies. So I'm afraid the Swedish have wandered um, within our range and we're going to destroy them. Our armies are a bit depleted but to be honest, we've got good artillery. They've, they're quite heavily depleted as well. We can focus fire their, their units that are actually intact with our artillery and just pretty much make them, make them a uh, a no longer existing force. So let's attack. So right now we are moving on towards Kiev and the um, Archangels to the north um, which will soon see the end of the Swedish Empire. And uh, yeah, not before time. They've been <laughs> they've been an enemy for a huge number of episodes right now, and obviously we are up to episode one hundred and five. Not bad at all. Um, I have had a couple of comments that people, uh, well, let's say a couple. One, let's not over <laughs> let's not over egg my my popularity. Um, but I have been asked like, how do I, how can I stay playing this game? And. You know, it's a fair question. It really is. Because for a game that's not... For a Total War that's not really seen as being one of the more popular ones, um, everyone seems to have a positive opinion of it in memory, but people don't play it. That's what I generally think is going on. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's quite good. I like it. I like the scale. I like the effects. The, it's pretty stable for me, apart from my Great Britain campaign. That's a bit unstable. But I just enjoy it and I know it really well, so I just it's difficult to not play it. The same way you get people that play Rome 1, even though original Rome 1 rather than Rome Remasters, because they just kind of feel it at home when they play it, I suppose. Would I like to try some different Total War games? Yeah, for sure. But at the same time, uh, I don't mind playing this. Because since I've started doing videos for it, I've actually been trying out like new factions and so on it's so easy to just sit there and go I'm gonna play as Britain and blow everyone up with my ships and you know out produce everyone and just have a fantastic time it's actually quite good to try something um, at least a bit different like I like until then I'd, I'd never played as the Ottomans I just never been a faction I was that bothered to play and it was interesting to try and play them so that's what playing that's what playing it online for people does do, is when people say, I'd like to see this, and you kind of think, oh no, I don't, I've don't. i never played as, you know, such and such faction, or this kind of, played it this kind of way, that you think, oh, you know what, screw it, let's give it a go. But then that can backfire. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, I've, I've, I've been asked about it once. I've been asked to play the pirates, once and as much as I know I just said I like trying new things that's that's too new that's 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 a lot um, because the pirates <laughs> fundamentally play the game in just a not very good way like my oh there comes the lifeguard of horse so drop these three all into squares to provide a bit of mutual support Let's retarget my hearts, as I know the Cossacks are on their way in, but I can retarget these before the Cossacks get in and drop them into square. Drop you guys into square. Because the, the AI is not entirely stupid. They do realise there are times when they don't actually want to uh, charge into squares. They don't just go, hoo -doo, that's who we're charging, let's carry on. Uh, yeah, where was I? So, about the pirates. I mean, I'm jabbering away because I don't think... This isn't the battle that requires too much commentary. But it's a... Yeah, the, how the pirates play... Um, I just find super... It's super not my thing. I mean, you guys have seen how good I am at the naval side of Empire, and the answer is not very good. So as the pirates, you're relying on a lot of naval actions biased in your favour, generally, to try and um, capture people's ships and bring them into service, which is great. I, I, I can really see the attraction there, because I used, I used to do it a lot. Years ago, I used to be actually good at Empire Total War naval battles. I did used to be good at them. Um, not anymore. 
uh, for whatever reason. But I can definitely see the attraction there of going, okay, I, I don't have a navy. I'm going to enjoy the attraction of building one from scratch using other people's stuff. Go on, regiment of foot. Oh, the light horse took some good artillery shots there. Yeah, the pirates I wouldn't do. The Native American factions, maybe, if I was on a... If I was feeling particularly generous, because again, it's a whole style that... I like playing Gunpowder Total Wars for the gunpowder side. As much as I find the melee side of the Ottomans fun, and I, how I would imagine I would find the melee side of the Indian factions fun, and countries like Italy that have got, you know, cool pike units, I do find it fun, don't get me wrong, but if playing as the Native American factions where you almost exclusively rely on some form of melee unit because your ranged units are skirmishers, I would rather play you know, like Rome or Rome 2 or something like that to get those sort of feelings. Like, I wouldn't think, oh, brilliant, I get to play... You know, this is a gunpowder total war. This is what it's all about. This kind of stuff. And I just, yeah, I really wouldn't enjoy playing Native American factions unless I did or did something like... Um, I made it almost exclusively, I played it as like a short campaign, early game, because obviously the, the main problem of the native factions is that they are just not competitive late game. They've got no defence against so many, well, limited defence against so many artillery types and musket drills and so there's a, there, is a, there is a limit to what you can do with them. So I think that's the bit, that's what I'd kind of struggle with. I'm sure there's a way to do it. I'm sure there are, there are people out there that are much better at me than Empire, frankly. That they'll be able to play the game in such a way that they can... They can really squeeze the maximum out of all of their units. I'm sure there are people like that. It's like the people that, uh, well, it's like uh, uh, Legend of Terror War who, you know, some people who describe it as... Is cheesing the AI. Um, I've never really been that bothered about making maximizing my effectiveness. I, I generally run by the, the rule of cool. And the problem is the rule of cool with the native factions doesn't really work. Um, because, yeah, they're cool, but they just ain't good. you got you got to play a bit more competitively, I suppose would be the way to describe it, than, uh, than I'd be interested in playing. So... Yeah, but there's no point in me discussing that because we've got a. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, it's a long time before I have to worry about in my next campaign. A long time. Because right now I've got four campaigns active, which is going to become three. Um, and even then, my next campaign, during some YouTube discussion stuff I've been doing, people have generally settled on the idea of playing Napoleon Total War 3 but as a, a smaller European nation, which I've never played. I've only got about 100 hours in Napoleon total. Not very much at all. So that could go really badly. <laughs> um, I mean, it'd be interesting. It will be interesting, I think. It just very much depends on the nation that wins, I think, and their ability to expand and not get completely annihilated by the, uh, by the enemy. It's going to be the big one. The Lancer Guards, understandably, have not... Since I've been jabbering on, I've not really been doing... Fight using my Lancers effectively, but... You know, it's late game. You can afford to... You know, kick back and live off the pension, so to speak. Because you've just got so many armies everywhere and you just dominate the enemy so much. You can afford to be a bit more bloody and a bit more Stalinist, Stalinist in how you use your troops. Like this. One militia versus a cavalry unit and a horse artillery unit. Well, I may as well just fight it just to do damage to them. It's 35 men. Disaster. 
But we're on our way to take them out. Oh, here come the Greeks. <laughs> oh, right. We, rule <laughs> we actually won very well. Let's bring all these galleons into our surface. Galleons are always nice. Oh, here comes more Greek ships. Again, let's, let's try it again. God damn. High capability ships are awesome. But that fleet does need to run away quite severely. But then again, we are actually about to... Ooh. Yes, please. Because this guy pushed my fleet out as he marched back to the city. He, uh... He has allowed me to intercept him. It's got lots of... You know, Hussars... Corflakes, Orophilakes, Philakis. It could be Philakis. To be honest, that sounds more Greek than Flakes. <laughs> Philakes. Um, lots of cool all the other units. But yeah, it's to be our first fight against the Greeks. And it'll also draw in the um, garrison at Patras. But then again, this isn't. Clearly, these armies don't have the same numbers of troops um, per unit that I have. So. Yeah, this isn't going to be a great result for the Greek Empire. As we witnessed when I tried to play them and it just went spectacularly badly wrong. And we are going to attack because they've got lots of cavalry, sure, but lots of the other units are just really weak. Let's just create a main battle line that's going to push in. Let's create sort of a reserve just in case we get caught out by deployment. Guard de corps, cuirassier, all deploy on the right. S sort of. Not caught out, that's the wrong word, but. There is a contingent on this flank that could do with us pushing up. So let's have a look. So the 5th Lightfoot Corps of Philakis. Philakis is what I'm going to call it. They look pretty nice. Nice long muskets. Well, they're probably rifles, I suppose. This is the Zoigites. That's probably not. I'm sorry, I'm butchering all this. It's their light, the light horse artillery unit, which looks pretty good. This is their heavy unit, which looks like the same crew model, but just a heavier gun. That's a, that's a good cavalry unit there, a Dragoon unit. So another light foot unit, another light foot unit, and a regular unit who look, they look really good. But yeah, fundamentally it's just, it's, it's not going to go super well for Greece. I mean they're advancing with an army whose main component is light infantry so yeah my artillery is probably going to outcompete theirs this is a light foot they won't have fire by rank because they probably don't have the schools but these might be like the um the irish regiment for the spanish is that they're called light infantry and they've got you know elite numbers of troops like what you get in a guard unit Oh no. Let's watch these Orophilakis. Orophilakis. I mean, they're not. They're not deciding to attack us yet. <laughs> oh, that sick light foot that looked like it was trying to charge our line got pushed back. So these men are just going to serve to uh, give the reinforcing garrison army someone to march towards. While our army pushes up. I mean, quick climb seems like cheating now. These brave souls just don't have the capability to resist us the way they need to. What's that? You need a regulars. First light foot. To be honest, these guys might be able to get a kill box. Um, deployed. Hey, they made it to our line. Good. Kill them. They've got sabres. That they do. Nice. So they might actually be a bit more capable in the melee than a regular light infantry. 
would be. They're too experienced chevrons, so they've not... They've got something going on. They have a level of training. You men deploy square. General's bodyguards trying to get a rear charge off on us. Charge our right flank up onto this high ground. Yeah, let's switch our howitzers to round shot. And get them just to, to just attack the, that unit of General's bodyguard. One General's been killed trying to charge our square. Yeah, I'm not bothered about making sure we wipe out um, wipe out the troops that remain. Unless, of course, they elect to stay. If they routed and then decide to come back, that's a different matter. The Dragoons have opened up. Understandably, these chaps are not... He got his pistol drawn. Oh... Didn't see anyone fall, so I don't think you got him. Yep. Bad times. <laughs> Bad times for the Greeks. Poor souls. There's been getting engaged by round shot. Sooner or later they will all fall as well. This gun team is elected to try and route. Or just try to relocate. Which isn't a fantastic result for them either. Again, because they are limbered up, they will all perish. Hey, there's the Greek general. Yeah, you guys have Adam. That's my cuirassier I tried to bring over. They're engaging the general's bodyguard. Hello. The regiment of Dragoons is returned. Well, these units can just run over here and deploy into the kill box. General's bodyguard's going down. Actually, you guys hold steady. Let the guard de corps go up front. Let those guys just mob the general's bodyguard. Guard de corps will take care of these dragoons. Yes. Have Adam, General. Get the artillery to just attack ground. Cease the artillery fire. Just mob the General with everyone. Let him know that he can't just swan around in front of our lines and do whatever he pleases. We do have a, a gun crew that's waiting for orders. But the idea is my artillery just fires round shot just into this area, because this is the the um, garrison at Patras coming in to try and help protect and save their army. Which isn't going to happen. Go on, E-men. Kill the general's bodyguard. I don't think... Well, that one... This guy might have already died... No, there he is. But they're shattered anyway. Just kill the gunners. These guys have charged our line. They're very keen. Yeah, friendly fire. Who doesn't like a bit of friendly fire? It's all friendly. And go after that artillery unit. You guys are going to cut off these, the fifth light foot, but they're still going to suffer 
relatively minor casualties because they're so close to the edge of the map. We keep right clicking so that some stop to try fight us. Yeah, they've gone. Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, that's not quite what I had in mind. Got some dragoons in here. Lots of the infantry is already routing. Right, walk some infantry up, fire well off to act as a reserve. Lots of artillery shots are landing in this general area. Fundamentally, I think it's rather unfortunate that you're the garrison of a garrison, not a garrison of Athens, but the garrison of Patras going, let's protect and save our allies, our comrades, and then you get here and think, oh, nuts. And there goes the second regiment of dragoons. The Shunia Vassars is coming in. Deploying to squares for these men. They are also routing, although they might come back. Let's might bring a cover unit over here. Let's try intercept. More hussars. Lots of cavalry. Oh, they're shattered. Hussars are trying to charge on another front. Well, they're good looking Hussars. Although they are shaken at the prospect of charging headlong into an established enemy line. Do not envy them that decision. Come on, you chaps, get out of square. More hussars. Because hussars are not exactly the sturdiest of cavalry options either. It's like you men halt, fire at will, pour a volley into that hussar unit from the rear. We don't want to advance too close because we want to give them a reasonable amount of space to deploy into. Sars are already wavering. They haven't lost a single man yet. Yeah, now they've lost a handful. That's, they've decided that's not for them. Although it looks like it's now just the artillery that's going to come in. Oh no, there's still some irregulars to come in, but the guns are likely to not survive very long. And that's a bit of an understatement. But one of our gun teams can hit that unit of Hussars and will continue to do so. All the while, let's, let's squeeze the noose a bit more. Fundamentally, it looks like they are getting into a point where they can skirmish us at a certain point without needing to charge us properly. Well, not charge us, but all the regulars of these guys are charging. Don't worry, boys, you've got the uphill advantage. Ah, oh, maybe not. No. <laughs> My god. Another unit of irregulars coming up. Although these guys are regular ethnoflakes, they look pretty good. Oh, hold on, slow down. They're way they're charging as well. Because again, what choice do they have, fundamentally? They've been called to battle for a hopeless cause. Yeah. There they go. 
push up a little bit more. I'm not overly bothered about maximising my efficiency. It's more about... It's more about just getting units in, firing upon the enemy and getting them to break because, I mean, come on. They're not going to win. This battle is over. Red on the foot's got a good firing position. Some people, oh, so have a look at my in, uh, Indian mercenaries, which look pretty. They look pretty good. They do look pretty good, but understandably, <laughs> these these skirmishers do not have the staying power that they need. So I think I honestly might just play this at increased speed. As beautiful as these units look, they are not meant to last in this world. Against the, against the forces of Louisiana. They do look lovely, but sadly, when trapped in the corner, there's not a lot else they can really do. Oh dear, dear, dear. So that battle is over. <laughs> yeah, it's over. They've they've been pushed out of the capital. Das Capital. They've demanded peace and they've offered to become my protectorate. No. This is a world domination, I'll have you know. We're going to take your territory then advance on to Athens. And there's going to be nothing you can do about it. So army destroyed up here. Well, army is a very grandiose term for a regiment of militia, but okay. Push you guys up to Archangelsk. Some good traits. Extra demands from Crimea, but they've since chilled out. This army is already replenishing, so let's do some spending. Comey. Comey get a new, a new um, industrial building and better roads. Konigsberg, get better roads. Upgrade the boarding house at Chechnya, because does that mean you guys can leave? Hurrah! So Jean-Victor Clareau can push over to this dockyard. To be honest, we've got a couple of armies that are waiting to be deployed. Let's not go overboard, shipping people overseas just yet. Keep on upgrading our infrastructure because again we have run into not problems but surprising concerns at this stage to be a bit like oh we've actually got less than six figures in the bank that's a bit of a surprise not used to that used to just having much more money than you can throw than you can uh, shake a stick at not quite sure what the etymology of that word is I mean I, don't, I mean we don't well, I don't have a lot of things. I don't really shake sticks at them anyway, but whatever. Petrovskaya. Yeah, you've got, you've got your roads. Pretty sure that's almost... That's pretty much everything, to be honest. We don't need to go too mad. So Moscow is secure. Sebastian Perrault. Push Kiev. Your Majesty. Philippe de Roubert push towards here to be honest that's what they're all going to do push towards Istanbul because there aren't I don't think there are any well obviously there's Ottomans down here but there aren't any actual like uh, enemy troops wandering around I mean there's a unit of militia to the north sure but okay, you guys can to be honest let's just disband you guys Gaston Mansart. Let's push you up. Because you're going to lead the charge into these units. With Dion Danoville for support. Next turn. So that means the garrison at Crimea needs to stay where they are. Because these, these guys are going to push full back west. Or will fall back west. Like I said, I am going to actually focus on 
other actions for now, such as securing Minsk. But Claude, Perrin Frise, you also push towards Kiev, as will Gerald, as will you, as will you, as will... Oh, and that's extended council building that. As will you. Harvesting because supply. Minsk is ours for the taking. Might even try and demand the surrender. No, I'm not going to water as well because I don't want to damage these armies. So let's quickly knock out Minsk from the Swedes. And then we'll go down to um, the Balkans and sort that out. We can, well, potentially... Well, it depends what the garrison of um, Athens is like. We could, if it's empty, we could demand... Well, with the depleted army, demand the surrender of Athens, but with the main army... Well, with the main army, is probably going to have to attack Patras first. Six-pounder horse artillery. Terrifying firepower of man. So through the town... Pull up our main infantry. Fusiliers and skirmishers will go out on the left with all of my cavalry because they're a bit vulnerable. Crack them open. To be honest, it actually looks like not even they want to be in the town. Not using skirmishers the way skirmishers should be used. Pretty much like a long range extension of my battle line. Yeah, they can quick line my cavalry, although we have managed to outpace it. So let's get you guys there, you guys run into the town, get ready to start to flank the enemy. Yeah, you guys form square, because. You are fusiliers still. You're not the best when it comes to fighting off enemy cavalry. Still, let's take our infantry. Yeah, they're still in a good place. Our cavalry here, their cavalry. This unit, charge the hussars. To allocate our target, our howitz targets to the remaining infantry. This cavalry is going to take, make light work of those Cossacks. This hussar unit is going to go down pretty rapidly too against a full strength heavy infantry unit with later game technologies. Yep, there goes that enemy unit. To push up our fusiliers. The militia are charging in because they can't maintain the they can't maintain the um, actual musket battle for very long bring the cavalry up you guys form your positions you guys form form up here on the flank there's a gap filler all my artillery aim at the fifth lifeguards of horse because they are the only real target for them on the field everyone else is going to fall Pretty Ricky Tick. I know there's a Lancer Guards, but whatever. So let's put a few new Fusiliers one side of the barn, a unit the other side of the barn. Skirmishers in the woods. Yeah, militia are done for. That unit, that militia unit attacking our line broke anyway. Drop a load of artillery shots on pretty much everyone. Just think, men, you could have given up and endured a lifetime as a prisoner of Louisiana until we control the world. But you had to... Oh, God. You shot him in the head. But no, you elected to fight. Who's that back there? Guerrilla mercenaries, eh? Go get him, Hussars. Oh, okay. They're going to put down stakes, are they? Just to be annoying. Oh, 
that. And run that way, yes. Good, good, Hussars. I don't want them to, the infantry to retreat this way and all my cavalry just to run through the stakes. There we go. So that's that last Swedish pustule behind our lines dealt with. And that's why that army that's advancing to the north is so important. So... Do we want... What do we want? Three armies here, which is very much overkill. To attack the Austrians. I know I've said that. Four armies. One, two, three, four. Yeah, no. Let's take a galley. Take this force here at Corsica under Olivier Bousset. Again, a valued general who's given us many, many, many successful campaign outcomes. You are going to begin to leapfrog your way up towards... Iceland. And I know that's why we're recruiting a new army to do that, but what a waste of money that is. Disband. Disband. Ready for Sorry, Mr. Sheraton, and all your troops. You can return to your homes. So we've done that. Fleet arrives. Oh, okay. It's just more ships. Ah! Oh. Live and let live. Let the Austrian ship do. Let the Austrian ship carry on. Not bothered. Um, so, down here. So if I take Paul Merle... Can he not? Okay, so it's a radius of action problem for him then. I mean... I'm gonna I'm gonna fight it manually just because it is the capital of Greece, <laughs> of the Greek faction. I mean, <laughs> come on, <laughs> I could auto resolve it, but I'm gonna do it the honour of fighting for it as it's the last territory for their faction, and I will have to extend the same honour to the Swedes in their uh, Archangelsk redoubt to the north. I mean, I've got to give them that at least. Although I'm, I'm pretty sure I probably haven't done that. For some other factions. This is very much spur of the moment um, respect I'm giving them rather than um, any specific code or plan of my own doing. Get in there. 24 pounder and 18 pounder guard artillery. Grenadiers are going to go straight in. A lot of our infantry is probably going to attack the shoulders of the breach itself. Can you guys not? Oh my god. Yes! Attack in the center, please. Drop quick climb here, please. Come on. Shells away. Shells away. Yes! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh god. <laughs> Got nothing to say. I mean just look at it. And here comes the reinforcements. 35, 61, 96 plus 8. So it's the 104. 104 guys. Good job you got back up or else this could have been a slaughter. These guys are lucky. They're dying from quicklime so quickly. They haven't got to suffer the ignominy of dying to a bayonet stab in the face. Oh 
Well, you guys go there to fight them if they come out the gate. You men climb up there, you men climb up there, you men climb up there. Very much not necessary, but... Eh. They're coming out. Get in there! Yes, thank you for reminding me, quick climbing. Let's just stop all that. <laughs> Push in there and attack that armed citizenry unit that's not got many men left. Get in there. They're going to slow us down. Or well, they're going to attempt to. With their pikes. Losing decisively. Those are fun words to see. take some of these three units and just make them blow through. I mean, I'm probably going to lose a bunch of men attacking this because I'm just going to smash men into the breach, but whatever. Whatever. Gate is ours. So the new men can charge down the side of the wall and take the battle to the men. The general's bodyguards got involved as well. Where's my grenadiers? Have at him, grenadiers. So you guys get over here, secure the gate. <laughs> uh, those men are also running up and around. Good on them for doing what they believe in. To try and defend their homeland. Too bad it ain't gonna help. So the 14th Regiment are gonna go secure. Oh, the gate's secured already. Perfect. Yeah. So the game's starting to chug, so let's take a selection of my troops and say, no! Get out of there! Let my grenadiers sort this out. <laughs> some men are running in, some men are running out. So these men can just charge the irregulars coming in. Just try to run the cavalry inside. Oh right, they've put some of them are outside as well, I see. Eh, run in the gate, it's ours. That East India Company infantry unit is. Oh, they're, they're still winning. Yeah, let's just get one unit on the centre. Start the timer. They've started to realise that something's up. They've realised. God damn. Yeah, <laughs> this reinf this reinforcing unit's broken. So let's get you guys inside. You guys are mobbing the last staff members of the general staff here. We're picking on the last handful of enemy troops. I mean, understandably, they are pikes. They are still pikemen, so they are still not completely terrible. But still, doesn't really matter. Is there only 56 of them? There are many. And they will likely break in a matter of seconds. Let's 
especially when just bleh. <laughs> Dun 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 Come on, in you get. I mean, there's like six people defending the fort and still they're not going to break. So eight, two, two. So there are 14 people and they're still going, well, you know, we're upset, but we're not going to leave. But then again, I suppose it is their... Um, their faction's capital, if they lose it, they are uh, wiped from civilization. The last handful of guys oh they're they're stuck in the stuck in the wall. Right. <laughs> okay. And we the ticker has gone down. Here we go. End the battle there. And there goes the Great Greek Empire, their first and last appearance in my campaign. <laughs> repair the Royal Palace, let's replenish the troops, let's get my ships into port, let's repair the port. Oh good, Athens has no garrison, so Mr. Constantine, the Constantine, can go over to Athens and say, Gimme, Gib. <laughs> Siege broken, damn right. Damn right the siege was broken. There was no nothing no siege to break. So you may replenish, build some walls, recruit some more troops. So we haven't got to ooh, whoop. We haven't got to worry for too long about some of these enemy units because obviously we do have troops getting steaming their way over here rapidly. So I want to position my army ready for this fight near Belgrade, because that's going to be a bit of a punch-up. So most, not many of these guys can actually get there and get there in um, many turns. Obviously you're within range of Transylvania. But you're going to be the one to take it. So that means you guys can probably push over to here to stop them from... Ooh, hello, there's more troops here. The, these guys at Iassi are going to attack and destroy this little raiding force. There we go. So you men replenish. Do a bit of replenishing, rebuilding, upgrading, although it's largely unnecessary. Mr. Chomps say you can pick up these two men here. These two units, I should say. He's not picking up men. Because you sort out the Balkans. You're on your way towards Iceland, but you need to wait. I mean, if I need more than one army, that'd be a bit embarrassing, wouldn't it? So let's take my army, cross over into Italy. Wait, do I have... Ah, they're a protector of Denmark. Wait, do I have... How can I just walk into their territory? Doesn't that normally... Oh! Oh, that was my spy I was controlling, right. Okay, so next turn then. Next turn to invade... Italian territory whereas to be honest let's just take a lot of these units sail them over to Sicily well, I didn't like that trying to put that together yeah, one army is okay for there. You sail into Heracleon. So let's take this light galley over to Natalia. Mr. Sonse, push up to Antalya. And that's probably not even how his name is pronounced, but yeah. Sail down towards Cairo. Cairo has no garrison, so disembark the army. 
demand the city surrender to me. Very well. Um, yeah, let's fight it and take it. <laughs> let's take Cairo. There aren't many battles to do in the rest of this campaign. There's probably about probably six cities to take. Maybe ten battles all in left to fight. We can ex we can afford an extravagance here or there. Yes, the end is very much near for our non-Louisianan friends. I'll probably end up coming up with a faction guide after this. Well, it won't be it won't it won't be really a faction guide. It'll just be kind of a uh, a debriefing, if you like, things I things I liked, strategies I needed to do. To be honest, with Empire, there's always a point of there's always a point where when you're late game enough. Guides don't help. Guides only really help you springboard. So it might not be a massively long video, but I think it would still be good. <laughs> just, just clear them out. Oh no way, those are my howitzers. What a dummy. I wasted that initial salvo. <laughs> so just like the Greeks. Just blow away in. Or a couple of ways in, to be honest. Lots, of, yeah. Well, they, they, I mean, they're more to garrison. The more the howitzer is going to do a real number on the. Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, they don't like responding to me at times. The guns. Attack the wall there. Well, if nothing else, our howitzers at least are clearing the way through. Okay, good. Now we're attacking the wall. Just walk my line up. Or run them up. Because these guys have resulted in a lot of dead. My howitzers have resulted in a lot of dead. Look at this guy. He's doing the YMCA. Yeah, but that section of the wall is not long for this world. To be honest, use my howitzers to also attack that section of the wall because it's a bit it's a bit silly to keep quick climbing the center like that so let's take these men on the right flank push them up these men in the center advance them up a bit more these three they're going to go directly into the the new breach. To be honest, just, just give these guys orders to assault. You men take the gate. A 60 seconds stand by the gate. You men push up. Sepoys get ready to hold the gate. And these three are just going to be ready to go in. Collapse. Cease fire. So that's because we know we're going to we're going to successfully capture the gatehouse on the right flank, we're just going to run some mine up to secure it immediately. Azar, Azar, Garrison Israeli that's lost a third of its men, and a bunch of armed populace units back here that pretty much consist of one guy going. This guy giving the world's best pep talk. Charge! No, how it says, cease fire. Yeah, they fired a volley into the 63rd. A good volley. Officer with his sword held high. Who does he combat? Who does, he, who does the officer fight? Okay, so he's... Uh, didn't kill that guy. Kill the guy. That guy there. So the officer's... Frozen. He's taking a minute. He's just recomposing himself. It's the first time he killed a man. Dueling with that guy. 
Oh god, the officer's gone down! <laughs> huh. I, mean, I know it's completely pointless doing massive city, you know, like assaults and things like that, like this, but ah, why the hell not? Don't worry, the gatehouse will be ours. Although it looks like you guys want to run out of it anyway, so my guys are going to run in. Charge down off the walls into the enemy. There are my guards. Get my guards to charge the Israeli here. Firelock arm populace is holding on. There's plenty of us around. And yeah, the gate is ours, so just push a sepoy unit through the gate. Although it looks like they're not going to do that. They're going to prefer to run around the breach. Alright, fair enough. There we go, most of the city is broken. They get the defenders at the gate are broken, so these men are going to run and secure the square. The 33rd are upset, so let's give them some artillery fire to see if we can... There we go, they've routed as well. <laughs> Excellent. So Cairo fell to our forces as well as you could imagine so there are true there are armies here that could try and do something about it but they've got to choose between do they defend jerusalem or do they defend cairo so let's repair everything knock down the university we may as well repair the dry dock it doesn't really matter steam powered factory steam powered factory Cotton Warehouse, Pleasure Garden, Pleasure Garden. Yeah, that's probably fine. Good. So let's put a... Uh, uh, okay, no, that's our ship holding the, holding the line. So let's move one of these light galleys up to Sinop. Ready to transport that army when we have our final assault. Then you guys sail back to the crossing to the to the zone here. Obviously, they can they can try and attack us if they want. But I'm just going to fill this area up with ships, so they don't they don't really want to. Uh, even these damaged ships, yes. Actually, you guys are going to sail to the port near well Piraeus. Piraeus, Piraeus. Push those ships into out to the open sea where you can destroy them. More orders. So then these ships can also sail up to the crossing. Just mass our ships so that if they choose to attack us, they're making an active choice. So then back here, let's build us a couple of sloops. Um, then we're going to want to take... Mm, to be honest, I don't really want to send any of those sh ships on. Just blockading duty, but I will. We don't need to transport any navies yet, any armies, because we've got two that need to move, plus a third down here at Tripoli. But they're not needed yet. Got a couple of actions up here to the north that still need to be fought first, and even then they need to be they need to be um, properly reinforced. Especially you, actually. You guys stand a bit further back and have another army up front. A large contingent swinging in from the west. The east is being squeezed. You're not within range, hit Klausenberg. No one's in range, hit Kiev. No one's in range, hit Archangel. To be honest, I'd like to take out. Well, I'd, I'd auto Archangel and then fight the Battle of Kiev. That's the way to do it. So let's hit end turn. Oh, some more of our <laughs> some of our ships still scrapping in the trade zone. Not that it matters. 
Oh, we've still got some of those raiding, Aust uh, raiding Austrian lovelies um, near Paris. But again, we're not really that bothered. The Austrians want peace. They're not going to get it. Go try and steal some of our technology. But again, we've got technology coming out of our ears. What are the Ottomans going to do? I suspect the answer is going to be not very much. Especially not when they lose Jerusalem. Well, that's going to be a, a gar gargantuan battle near Istanbul. It's going to be quite. It's going to be rather fun. Okay, so you're running around. You're probably going to try and take out Damascus, which I'm going to just auto resolve you with this army. Auto resolve you to death. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> Maybe might ship an army over to Damascus to take them out. To doubt that arm well that army might have the strength, it would depend, we'll have to have a look. But I think Well, the Ottomans are suffering, they're trying to figure out what to do. The CPU's desperately doing loads of calcs going, Oh my god, what do I do? There's men everywhere and they're gonna kill us all. You wanna go, yes, yes we are coming to get you and I mean at some point they must start taking attrition across the board because they don't have the, the economy to support that many troops surely that's got to be a thing that starts to emerge the armies the west in western Greece are deciding to pull push northward whoop some Greek rebel, no, to Ottoman rebels. We're not going to be successful. Yeah, the Ottomans have, they're regrouping, all right. They're regrouping, but will it be enough? That's the question. Because there's still that 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 pocket of troops near in um the Middle East in near um, what would be Saudi Arabia, wouldn't it? Or maybe maybe Jordan, Saudi, Iraq, that area. We've still got them surrounded. Well, yeah, I they guess they're going to go raid. Hey, and the garrison at Jerusalem is going to sally, which we're going to defend. But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for the destruction of the Jerusalem garrison. Cheers, everyone.